Well, I finally did it. Just got paid the other day and have enough money set aside to resume child support payments. And actually have a little bit of money left over um, for trying to get my uh, vehicle up to um, speed here for uh, full-time van dwelling. Um, if you've been following the series and you know that I had a 35 uh, amp hour AGM battery that I had bought from Harbor Freight for a little Bluetooth um, power system. Unfortunately, um, that battery didn't last very long. I didn't fully maintain it. And um, it's only holding probably about 7 or 8 amp hours in it right now. Which is enough to run a fan all night at the yurt, but not really much for anything else. So I've decided to pick up um, Walmart's best battery here that I could find. Um, it's the Premium Max Marine and RV Everstart battery. Group size 29DC. Um, it's only got uh, 114 amp hours on it at one amp. But that should be more than enough to run my fan all night and even the rice cooker as needed. Um, though this one was only 35 amp hours, so this is about three or four times more powerful. So I really shouldn't be having any power issues at this point. And I'll be installing this battery in, in place of the 35 amp hour AGM battery. And I know it should be vented, but um, I'm just planning on venting it while I drive by leaving the windows open, which is what I normally do anyways. Battery only releases um, poisonous gases as far as I understand when you're actually charging it. So when I'm driving is when I'll be charging the system back up and it will um, blow the, because I have the front windows open, it'll blow all the gases out the rear because my rear windows are always open. At least that's the plan. So we'll see how well that works. It is raining, so I've got to hurry and get everything um, installed and ready to go. Here then is uh, Little Blue's current system. It's got the AGM battery right here that I bought from um, Harbor Freight. It's a 35 amp hour glass mat, I guess, technology battery here that is meant for solar and um, RV type use, but it's only 35 amp hour. This 12 volt, 35 amp hour sealed lead acid battery, non-spillable. Uh, the problem with it is um, it didn't last very long. I don't think it even holds 35 amp hours now. I think it's holding more like about 7 or 8. And it's only been like a year or a little less than a year. So I wouldn't recommend getting this. It's, um, I guess they call it Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt Magnum. Yeah, Thunderbolt Magnum solar battery from Harbor Freight. Don't do it. Anyhow, we're going to be replacing it with this Everstart Max Marine and RV battery. It was $100 from Walmart. It is um, lead acid, so it's going to need venting. But I'm planning on just driving with my windows open when it's charging. Uh, we're just simply going to lay it down in here, hook everything up. And with any luck, everything should be up and running. I've hooked up the uh, positive to the positive, the red to the red, and the negative to the negative. And system should be up, so let's take a look and see how much um, voltage we have. My inverter tells me how much power. Oh, it says we're pulling power for the um, rice cooker right there, which I've unplugged. So now we're back to zero. Now it's hard to see on here. Um, if I can get the shade there, is that better? Yeah, so right now it's pulling zero. Let's take a look and see. It says 12.5, so battery's not not fully full. Usually when these 12 volt batteries are full, full, they usually say like 12.8 or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the um, inverter charging by switching my switch over there. You know, by the driver's side door, the light switch that I've installed um, while I'm driving and that should charge the system back up. But um, this battery is obviously way, way, way larger than this other one. So it should hold a lot more power. And with that, I should be having no problems with sleeping all night. 
um, with the fan running. I could probably run two or three fans and not have any issues at all. Here then is the system all reassembled. I need to fix my little portable unit there. I need to find another um, 12 volt battery that'll fit in there. And that way I can have a nice portable battery pack that actually works. But anyhow, um, system is up and hopefully with any luck, um, this battery will last me um, the entire time I need it and not die like suddenly. To test everything out, I'm going to crank up my car on my van here, a little blue too. Oh, turn off that radio. And now the system is, let me go ahead and unplug this so you don't see a draw being pulled from my amber. Um, that's, that's right now connected directly to the rice cooker, which I don't, you know, since I don't use the back kitchen anymore, I just wire the rice cooker right up front because that seems to be all the all that I use the electricity for. Oh, great, the door's locked. So let me try to unlock that door here. Make it unlocked. To activate the um, inverter charging system, I flip my light switch on that I've installed here. And, um, just a safety issue here. Some people say that you should not use a 120 volt um, light switch in a 12 volt DC system. And that is a 12 volt, I mean it's a 120 volt household light switch that I bought from Walmart or um, for only like a dollar or something like that with the whole setup. Um, the reason I went with that was I did have 12 volt um, DC uh, switches before that was supposed to handle up to 25 amps, I think, 25 I don't know if they went up to all the way to 30 amps. I think I even got a 30 amp one. And they were uh, flip switches that were designed for uh, 12 volt up to um, 30 amp hour or 30 amps. And the problem with them is uh, they all melted. So I ended up trying the house switch out of desperation. And um, it's been like, what, almost a year now? And I haven't really had any issues, even though some people say that's really dangerous because they can, the, the, DC power can arc and um, basically the switch can fuse and stay on or off or whatever and it can cause a potential fire hazard. But I haven't really had any issues and I also do have um, a uh, fuse that's connected to the um, vehicle battery so you know if things got really hot it would melt over there and disconnect. Now let's take a look. The system should say more than 12 volts right now. It should come up at 13 something. And sure enough it says 13.4. 13.3. So this tells me that um, the connection between the vehicle battery and the house battery is now complete and that the house battery, which is the battery in here in this unit, is currently charging through my wiring that, you know, went through that switch that's connected to um, the battery, which is here, the, the vehicle battery and the alternator. So... Um, system is charging right now, and I'll have to take a look at it and see what it looks like when it's fully charged. But I suspect it'll say like about 12.8, as that's been my experience. Right now it says 13.4 because it's charging up. Um, so more voltage is coming in than 12.8. Oh, just something that I thought I should point out. Let me shut that off. I don't need to have the inverter on. Um, when you're buying stuff like this, it's a good idea to keep the receipt handy and put it right with the item so you don't lose it. I put it into a Ziploc bag here to kind of seal it a little bit, and I should have taped it to the battery itself, but I forgot to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shove it up this battery hole and um, let it sit inside the battery box so that if I have warranty issues, I'll have the receipt right there with it. This battery supposedly has a two-year um, replacement guarantee or lifetime, you know, two-year, well, not lifetime, but two-year warranty on it. So if I encounter any problems, I'll just dig up this receipt and drop back by Walmart and see what they say. Hopefully I won't have those issues, but it'll be nice to have the receipt handy in case I ever need it. So I'm going to put it right in there with the system. And this is what I mean about shoving it in. I'm just going to shove it right in there. So it's just sitting in there right now. I do have a little side 
that little side slot right there, which I'll set it in or I'll tape it to the battery when I um, open up the battery for maintenance if I ever have to deal with it. But for now, at least it's there and secure and I know I won't be losing it. Here then is me charging the battery system. Um, you can see I have my windows wide open, so I'm not really too worried about poison gases. Uh, the wind will blow through and push the air out the back windows, which are open. My um, switch right here is set to on. So the, the two battery systems, the house battery and the vehicle battery, are currently uh, connected. And um, the alternator is charging the house battery. And then um, the house battery is charging the, um, I mean the vehicle, the alternator is charging the vehicle battery, the one under the hood. And then the vehicle battery in turn is charging up the house battery, which is the one we have in the back. And that's how the system works.